This is my little cat, Brandy. Hi. Nice to meet you. Today we're going to run some tests between the Sony Nex5 and the Samsung NX100. The biggest difference between the two cameras is UI. So if the NX100 looks like a small version of a DSLR, then the Nex5 looks like a big version of a compact digital camera. As you see, the NX100 has handy physical user interface. It has many buttons and many dials. But the Nex5 pursues a simple design. It has minimum physical buttons. Most of the functions are placed inside of the camera. So the Nex5's GUI is more complex than the NX100's. For example, let's change from ISO 400 to 200. NX100 is one, two, three steps. And the next five is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Of course, both cameras have their good and bad points. Today we're going to compare the NX100 and the NX5. I'm going to take pictures of my kitten for this. The most important thing about taking pictures of a kitten is capturing the good moments. The NX100 takes pictures very quickly, which is good in this case. First, the NX100 has faster startup time than the NX5. The NX100's display turns on as soon as you turn on the power. I think eye function lens is the best function of all. There's no need to go into the settings menu. This is the eye function button to control the parameters related to image quality. The focus ring is to control value of parameters. And on the top, you can see the mode dial. Now let's see the modes with eye function lens and how this lens makes taking pictures easily. In aperture priority mode, when you just push the eye function button and turn the lens, you can set the aperture, exposal value, white balance, and ISO only by this lens. It can take a picture you fixed on the subject, so it can take pictures like these. Lovely. Meanwhile, in the case of the next five, you can't see the subject when you set the menu, so it fails to capture the moment while adjusting to the menu. Now let's look at the pictures taken. This is a picture taken using the next five. The next five has good sensitivity of the noise, but we can see several purple fringing where the strong contrast can be seen. This phenomenon is called chromatic aberration. See the next picture. It is also happening in this one. This time, see pictures taken using the NX100. Chromatic aberrations is not happening in these pictures. Okay, compare the photo in autofocus. Both of the cameras provide a type of contrast in autofocus. I have focused in the center and taken the pictures. See the enlarged pictures. NX100 is better than the NX5. The difference has grown to go to the edges of the pictures. Also, in low value of aperture, the difference has grown too. Okay, so sometimes you can't charge the battery when you're outside. So let's take a look at the battery life. I have taken a picture per 30 seconds in the same condition. The NX5 has taken a total of 332 pictures, and the NX100 has taken a total of 426 pictures. With that said, the NX100 is able to take more pictures than the NX5. I think this is because of the display. NX100 has AMO LED display, but NX5 has true black LCD display. AMO LED is in the spotlight as displayed of a dream. Scientists said we can substitute AMO LED for LCD in the future. According to Wikipedia, AMO LED has many benefits. The NX5 has tilting LCD, so you can use it to take a picture of high or low angle but it is not fully back, so you cannot take a picture of yourself. Besides, both cameras have many features. The NX100 can take time-lapse recording using a cable release, and it can mount an exterior flash, an EVF, and a GPS module. While the NX5 can take panoramic photos, and it can also mount an OVF and exterior flash. Wow, what an end result. Of course, the results are subjective, but both cameras are definitely cool and stylish. For the best image quality, I would go with the NX100. But if you're just a beginner, the NX5 is a great choice.